Hello and welcome to our next reflection on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And today we talk about the seventh commandment, you shall not steal. It is calling us to practice justice, to practice charity, to practice temperance. It's a reminder, first of all, that this earth and this whole planet uh, is meant to be a home for all of us. And so the goods of the earth are destined for all. Everyone is meant to have enough uh, just to sustain their life, uh, to obtain the basic necessities for our life, uh, to look after and provide for our families uh, that we are looking after. Uh, and at the same time, we also have a right to private property. The two do not contradict one another. We share a common home, and whilst we share this common home, we also have a share uh, in the goods of the earth. Whenever we become owners of anything, we become stewards of providence. And that means we actually are in receipt of a gift. We have received a gift uh, that we need to look after and distribute. And so our wealth, no matter how it is counted, is not just for our own use. It's there to be shared, it's there to be distributed. It's there to look after the needs of those who might have less. And it's not just a matter of charity, of being charitable, as though we are doing somebody else a favor. The Church reminds us often it is a matter of justice. It's not charity as such. It's a matter of justice. It's an important point to keep in mind when we reflect on the various issues uh, that we face around the world. Uh, and so we need to have respect for the goods of others. That's what the Seventh Commandment is teaching us. And so we sin against this commandment uh, in various ways. The obvious one is through theft. Uh, if we respect the goods of others, we do, not, we do not just take or help ourselves to the goods of other people without their permission or knowledge. Under certain uh, extreme circumstances where there is an obvious need, an immediate need, uh, to obtain the essentials for life, uh, theft is not considered really. It's no longer a matter of theft. It's a matter of survival. Uh, but those conditions uh, apply just under, as I say, certain extreme circumstances. Uh, so without the permission, without the knowledge of somebody else, I am asked not to steal. Have respect for the goods of others. Uh, the other way which we can sin against this commandment is through unjust wages. We need to be just. Uh, we need to give enough for the contribution that has been made for the common good by the work of somebody. Uh, we need to value uh, the work and the service of other people appropriately to give them enough to provide for themselves and their families. Uh, we also sin against the commandment when we force up prices when we sometimes take advantage maybe of somebody's ignorance or necessity or hardship. Uh, we can even recall the situation re recently, a few months ago, at the beginning of this pandemic, when certain essential items suddenly, the price rocketed in some of the shops. Well, that would be against the Seventh Commandment. Uh, as well as the retention of goods lent. So somebody has lent me something. Maybe I borrowed something. Uh, and we decide to hold on to it rather than give it back. Fraud. Tax evasion. A work that is poorly done. When we actually don't care how we do our work. We're not diligent enough. 
uh, or conscientious enough that actually somebody else is relying on my work. And so I need to do it always to the best of my ability. Forgery. Uh, excessive expenses and waste. How many times uh, could we say that we are guilty of that as well in our daily life? Sin of corruption or willingly damaging the property of another. These are the various ways in which we fail to respect the goods of others, where we fail, where we fall, fall short of keeping the true spirit of the seventh commandment. As well as the goods of others, we need to respect, have respect for the integrity of creation. This whole world is created by God. Uh, the world of animals, plants, everything that exists by its very being is giving glory to God. And that, that deserves our respect. We, ha we don't have absolute dominion. Uh, that means that we can do whatever we like to the created world. We, remember, we are stewards of creation. Uh, we are meant to be masters of it but to remember that it is God's creation and it does require respect, it does require nourishment, looking after. Uh, we also come across here the social doctrine of the church, the social teaching of the church. Essentially, the church teaches us the demands of justice and peace. It proposes to us certain principles for reflection, it provides us criteria for judgment. It guides us uh, before we do something, it provides us the guidelines for action. Uh, the church never subscribes to any one given system, whether it's to do with finances or politics or anything else. Uh, why? Because we follow the gospel. Uh, the gospel values, the example of Christ who puts the person at the center of everything. Uh, and so the systems, whether it's a communist system, which might tend to try to leave God out of the equation altogether, and so spreads atheism, or whether it's the capitalism uh, that promotes profit-making and money at the center, uh, neither of them are perfect. Uh, because if you leave God out of the equation, or if you put money at the center of everything, then we are no longer following the gospel values. The dignity of the human being is no longer respected uh, if all we think about is profits and more profits. Uh, and so the argument that we need to have increased profits all the time because it produces investments so that other people can be helped uh, doesn't really suffice uh, to explain that a lot of the time the person is forgotten. The dignity of the person is no longer respected. Uh, and so we need to remember that all this economic activity is there to provide for the needs of human beings. The human being has to be at the center of any system that we come up with. Uh, and so we need to honor uh, the gift of creation. And so work is a way in which we honor God. It is a duty for each of us to work, to be able to work, and to do our best to find work. The work that we do is a means of our sanctification. It can also be redemptive. Uh, the invitation of our Lord to take up your cross daily and follow me uh, can easily mean I will take up the job I am asked to do uh, and I will do it to the best of my ability. It's one way of being united uh, with the suffering Christ, with the cross of Christ. Uh, and to offer this uh, 
work, whatever it may be, however mundane it may appear to me, uh, at times however unsatisfactory it may be, I can still use it as a means of my own sanctification and redemption. And so we have the responsibility to do what we can, to promote justice, uh, to be in solidarity with other people. And that applies to nations as a whole. And so the rich nations have a moral responsibility. They have a duty in solidarity and charity uh, to support those who are less well-off. To understand that sometimes the reasons for the other country's inability to develop uh, are tragically to be found in history through so many different wars or injustices. Uh, to realize that some of those well-off nations maybe have actually plundered the resources of the poorer countries, have taken advantage. Uh, and so it's a matter of justice. It's a matter of our moral responsibility uh, to help others to develop. So it's not just charity. It's a matter of justice for all of us. And for us as lay people, uh, to promote that through whatever means that is open to us within each state of life. And to remember the poor, this preferential love of God for the poor. Uh, to do the works of mercy. Uh, but to remember, and it does make a difference if we approached all these poor people that we come across in our way of life, uh, they're not charity cases. And this is not about me being charitable. It's about me in justice needing to help them as much as I can. It does change the situation tremendously if we change our thinking and approach to many of the issues uh, touched upon this seventh commandment. Uh, but to remind ourselves of the different works of mercy to which we are all called to, both spiritual and corporal, to instruct, to advise, to console, to comfort, to forgive, and to bear wrongs patiently. These are the main spiritual works of mercy. Practically, to feed the hungry, to shelter the homeless, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and imprisoned, and to bury the dead. These are practical ways in which we show our gospel values, in which we show our love and respect for one another. So let's pray today that we may reflect more deeply on the seventh commandment, and that we may also have the grace and perseverance uh, to live it to the full, to be faithful to the Lord. God bless.